Okay, I think this might actually work. Let's have a show, shall we? <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live thrice weekly show here on YouTube at youtube.com slash photo joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, unless it's today, which is a Wednesday at 10.30-ish a.m. Pacific, because I have been out of town and I just got back. So for those of you who, uh, who missed the show, thank you for tuning in this morning. It's lovely to see you. I know I got a lot of tweets and Facebook posts and all those good things saying, when are you back and all that, and that was, that was most awesome. So let's just see who's here this morning to start. Let us bring up the comments. Let's hope this all works. It does. And let's see what we got. Carlos Men, greetings. Hello from Panama. Um, did the GH5 course ever get updated for version 2X of the firmware? No, not yet. It is still on the list, um, but no, it will happen. It's just there's a lot. The list is big. SkateTube, hello, good morning. SRO Digital, welcome back. Well, thank you very much. Sean Bagshaw, greetings, my friend. Jet lag, just a little bit. I'll tell you, I'll tell you about the trip here in just a moment. Uh, Marwana, hello from Bandung, Indonesia. Right on. Jake Guptil, good morning to you, Martin. Sorry to read that BA were as rubbish as they have become of late. You know, the BA flight over the water was great. The BA flight within the from Italy to London to um, Heathrow, it wasn't that it was bad. It was my house is falling down. It was just that um, you got okay. I fly a lot, right? I mean, okay, I used to fly a really a lot. Now I fly like kind of a lot, but I fly enough. When you can't get free coffee on a flight, it's like, really? It's a two and a half hour flight and you want to sell me a cup of coffee? Fine, just give me some water. Oh, I'm sorry. The only water available is out of the tap, the, the crappy, tastes like metal airplane tap water that you serve that every travel guide in the world tells you not to drink. If I want real water, you're going to sell me that too. I can't get water or coffee included in my plane ticket anymore. That's a bit rubbish. I think that's a bit silly. That was Aer Lingus on the way in and BA on the way back. Same thing for the short leg. I mean, just, that's lame. Even Aer Lingus, not to like really, but really Aer Lingus, no alcohol. I mean, come on, I'm traveling with a three-year-old for Christ's sake. Give me a drink. No alcohol, no free alcohol, complimentary alcohol on the way there. On the way back, those on BA, there we did have complimentary wine and that was very nice. And, and the purser was very kind. He's like, oh, you have a three-year-old here, have some wine. That was really nice. But actually the kid did really, really good on the trip. Yeah, BA, that was a little, that was a little, come on. How about some free water at least? Jeez. Uh, gentlemen, good morning from sunny Riverside, Alabama. Excellent, Lucid Productions, checking in from Davis. Love it. SRO Digital, you've been missed by the looks of the viewing figure. Yeah, I know, it's, that's good, man. Look at all these people tuning in today. This is fantastic. How was my trip to Slovenia, Clement? It was awesome. I'm gonna tell you guys all about it in a minute here. Uh, hello there, Clem Pro, and Talman Murphy says, I'm back too, had a quick trip to Tallahassee, for, oops, let's scroll all the way, for work, not as exciting your trip. Hey, Tallahassee's cool. Assured Creative Media, did you manage to get the slider one updated? No, and I will talk about that. Um, everybody's in loud and clear, I'm back, I'm back. Whiskey Throttles is back from Slovenia. I was there on vacation, did a little work while I was there as well. Whiskey Throttle, I like the name Whiskey Throttle. This is this is good, we may have to talk. Uh, Ricardo, hello, created by Beatrix, hello from Seattle, met you at the Little Bit Touch offices. Oh, excellent, okay, so here's a cool story. So you know this trip, I'm doing this thing for LumaFusion and, um, and Narbox, and that was part, I mean, my trip was a vacation, but I'm doing a thing for them, and I shot something for them on the trip, told you all about it, tweeted about it, blah, blah, blah. I was up at the Luma Touch offices in Seattle, uh, what, three or four weeks ago or so, and there was a chap there who was just starting off as a beta tester, I think. Is that right, created by Trix? And he goes, I think I know you. You're Photo Joseph. I was like, well, that is so cool. And I said, well, hey, next time you're on the show, say hi. And there he is, created by Trix, is saying hello. So that is fantastic. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, Haji Astuna leave you. I totally messed up that name, I'm sure. Good evening from Romania. Matt Diver, you did miss me. Well, thank you. Um, give the three old whiskey. Whiskey Throttle says, see, now we're, now we're thinking. All right, lots of comments, lots of comments. We're just gonna move on here. This is, wow, over, over, um, overwhelming. You guys are awesome. Would love to talk over whiskey. Now, you're, now, you've got my, uh, now you've got my attention for sure. Okay, so first of all, I'm back. Um, it was on a two week, it's got, it was a two week holiday. It was kind of pre day We had a little bit of a mini kind of a holiday before the holiday, visiting friends in the Bay Area. Drove down to San Francisco, which is like a six hour drive to where our friends are. Flew out of SFO Tuesday, two weeks ago. What's today, Wednesday? So two weeks ago yesterday. Um, flew into Venice. We had, we had ridiculously cheap airfare from SFO to Venice. It was like $425 or something each. So crazy cheap airfare. Awesome. Flew into Venice, rented a car there, um, which is a whole other experience. I will talk about that in another show, but the whole car renting thing is interesting. But it was fun to have a car. I uh, drove from Venice to actually to Pidon, which is a Slovenian city on the coast. Their only coast, if you look at a map, Slovenia has like this much coastline. 
in that city is Pidon. I'd never been there before. Absolutely beautiful. Unbelievable drone footage that I got from there. Can't wait to show you guys that. And then the next day, drove the rest of the way to my wife's family, which is up near the Austrian border. And that is where we hung out for the next couple of weeks. Um, while I was there, I did a, a, took a day off to go shoot in Socha Valley and the, uh, and the Alps with Luca, who is a photography tour guide, um, photo guide. He does workshops. He works for other companies doing workshops to help guide through the region, focuses on that area. We'll, I'll try to remember to put a link into his show below, but I'll be talking about him, uh, to his uh, website below here. Ryan, don't forget to do that. Um, and I will talk about him more later. He's awesome. If you're ever out in the region, you definitely want to do that. John Doe, Buck99, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, he's got a question. I'll come to that in just a second. And, and uh, so we did that for a day. And then just the rest of the time was really just with family, just hanging with family, enjoying life. The journey back was long. So uh, we had to drive back to Venice, but we drove back. Let's see. We left my wife's family's home Monday after lunch, drove to Venice, got to Venice that evening, dropped off the rental car, went to a hotel, had dinner. Um, an embarrassing dinner. We'll talk about that another time as well, or not, because it's kind of really embarrassing. And um, all right, short, long story short, there was a nice restaurant we were going to go to, but then thought, mm, it's too nice. The three-year-old, he's a bit like, he's been in a car all day. He's a bit, mm, so let's not. We found another little place, kind of a corner bar. They serve pizza. Great. It's Italy. It's got to be great pizza going. I swear to God, it was microwave pizza. So upset. My only meal in Italy, and it was a like DiGiorno microwave pizza. Nasty. Anyway, so... Um, 7.30 a.m. flight on Tuesday, home, landing in SFO yesterday, Tuesday, I guess it would be, uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Had planned on just driving straight home, but it took three hours to get out of the airport because <laughs> custom sucks, takes forever. And by the time we got, the, you know, we got our luggage and then got the car, we were in rush hour traffic. We got as far as Vacaville, which is kind of north of, of it's just outside of the Barry and went, forget about it. Checked into a hotel, woke up at 2 o'clock this morning. Everybody was wide awake, so we got in the car and drove the rest of the way and said, I'm going to do a show. It's just going to be an hour later than normal. So that brings us to here. That is the way. All right, John Doe had a question. AV.io, AVI.io 4K, buy for streaming with GH5 or another recorder. Okay, so he's asking the AVI.io AV is a, well, that's the, that's the product. Is that the company? Is that the product? That's the product. It is a converter HDMI to SDI or HDMI. Uh, no, that wouldn't make sense. SDI or HDMI to USB. I think that's it. Very good device. Very solid hardware. One of the few that will work with just about anything you give it. If I remember right, it's one of the few that your computer will see as a webcam. So if you wanted to take your GH5 and hook it up to your computer as a webcam to use on Skype, stuff like that, then that is definitely a, a good device to use. A little on the pricier side of converters, but it works. A lot of the cheaper converters, um, like the ones from Blackmagic, which are really, really good and rock solid, the way that they're set up, it's a Thunderbolt device, and your Skype or Google Hangouts or Zoom.us or whatever you're using will not see that as a camera. Those services are designed only to work with webcams. If you try to give it a professional camera feed like you get from a Blackmagic box, um, which goes in by a Thunderbolt, it won't work. So if you want to use it as a webcam, you got to go with something like the AVIO. Um, and they, they have a 4K and a 2K version, so if you don't need the 4K, you can save a little bit of money. Hope that was helpful. Okay, um, so that was, that was kind of what we did. So I... I will be talking about this a lot more, of course, because this is kind of what the whole, the work part of the trip was. But just to refresh you, part of what I did, I have two new clients. It's Narbox, who make this little thing. We've talked about this a bit before. And LumaFusion, or LumaTouch is the company who make LumaFusion, which is a very robust video editor on the iPad. What I was making a video on, and it's not done yet, but what I was working on, what I was shooting for, and what I will be talking about at NAB, actually, if you're going to NAB, You'll want to come to the Narbox booth because there I'll be talking about the integration between Narbox and LumaTouch. What you can do now is connect your iPad to your Narbox wirelessly. That's what you've always been able to do. And then within LumaTouch, this really awesome editor, it's kind of like Final Cut or Premiere, but on an iPad. It's pretty remarkable. You can access your footage from here wirelessly. Scrub through the footage. You don't have to copy everything over. When you mark an in and out on a clip and, and add that to the timeline, then the software copies just that piece of the clip over to your iPad. So instead of having to have 200 gigs of content on your iPad, you can have just the pieces that you actually need as you edit. It's a really, really cool workflow. It's still in development. I'm working with early software, um, but, uh, but that's what it's all about. So that's what that whole thing was. And I'm really excited. I'm going to be very excited to show you that once it's a little bit farther along. Um, we, we already talked about gear before I left. I kind of went through the packing thing. But what I wanted to talk about here a little bit was what I actually used and what I didn't use. And incidentally, I have like 12 minutes to do everything because I got a meeting at 11. Um, so 
plug your ears real quick. Those ones always loud. Headphones, always use those. Battery pack, this is the Goal Zero 17,000 milliamp. I use this all the time. This is awesome, really robust. Um, I used the, the DJI Mavic Air a ton, flew this a bunch. Unfortunately, when I got into the Alps, it was too windy. I couldn't fly it up there, but I used this thing all over the place. Otherwise, got some beautiful footage. I am in love with this new drone. That is fantastic. Shot, of course, on the GH5 a whole ton. And look at that. Knocked off my, I'll fix that later. And with the microphone, the same mic I've always used. Um, one of the new things that I did was I brought along this little Tascam recorder. This is the LR10, is that right? I don't want to say, is that right? Uh, no, DR10L, sorry. DR10L, little recorder. This is, instead of a wireless transmitter pack, this is a, a lav recorder. So you just, you have this tiny little box, lav mic. I actually kind of threaded it into my jacket semi-permanently. And whenever I was doing dialogue somewhere like on a plane, because I recorded a lot of stuff on a plane, I would record with this, but also with this. Or I recorded one shot where I was far away, way too far away for this, and kind of walking towards the camera. And I was able to then record simultaneous audio on this. So I'll be able to easily sync those up in post. Um, it just allowed me another level of flexibility for the audio, for the dialogue that I was recording, which I thought was kind of cool. I even did things like record ambient sound. Like I would, I hooked it on the, um, on the back of the seat on one of the flights as we're getting ready to take off, you know, they're doing all the announcements just to get a lot of ambient sounds of the overhead announcement, the captain talking, yada, yada, just because I thought, you know, I might need that somewhere. It's kind of cool. So instead of having to roll video to capture the audio, I was able to just capture it through this. So that was kind of fun. Um, so that's stuff I used all the time. The iPad, obviously, I used. The Narbox, of course, that was the whole point. And variable ND filter, obviously super critical. Use that all the time. Lenses, I brought a lot of lenses. I probably only used half of the ones that I brought. Um, the 15mm 1.7, I guess I used that a little bit. The 25 0.95, I used that quite a bit. And that was the kind of, this is the lightweight shooting rig. But then I brought the big case with a bunch of other stuff as well. And that was more for the, because remember the whole project was basically shooting a video within a video. Uh, so the there's two videos that'll get produced out of this. There's the vlog entry, which is um, the bigger video. And then part of that vlog is about the production of the video that it was edited or will be edited on this. It's not done yet, but it's being edited on here. And that is kind of the video within the video. So when I was shooting this stuff, I was mainly just shooting with this little bit of gear, including the drone, and then shooting the other video, it got into some of the bigger stuff. So I don't know how much this I really want to unpack right now, but this is that Think Tank um, Airporter. What is this thing called again? Airporter. Um, Airport Advantage Plus. Bitchin' bag, I gotta tell you, this thing is awesome. It is rated for carry-on. Technically, it's too big for carry-on when the laptop is in here. It's your, your, it doesn't come with a laptop bag, actually. This is an older bag that I already had, but that fits in there fine. Technically, too big with this in there for carry-on, but you can take that out, and that can be your personal item, if you will. Or um, since there were three of us traveling, if I needed to, I could have easily handed it to like my three-year-old and gone, look, it's his personal item. But uh, I didn't have to, fortunately. But without this in there, this is full-on legitimate carry-on size. The one thing in here um, that I do want to mention... See, I didn't use I didn't use my time lapse camera, so I almost always bring now a um, LX10. This is a little LX10. I've even got a power supply for it. If I'm going to do time lapse, I use this thing because it's a camera that I can leave in the hotel all day long. Uh, I never did use it. Didn't shoot any time lapse, so oh well. Um, I brought a couple of my funky lenses, and I'm not using any of those. And uh, some backup gear in here. Oh, I did bring the GX85 as well, so I had just for family stuff, personal stuff. If I wanted to have a better camera than my iPhone, but didn't want to carry the GH5. There was a day of wine, is a wine tour, what do they call it? Wine, open cellar day. This is so cool. So you pay 20 euro, yeah, 20 euro, you get a wine glass. And, it's, and it comes in like a little thing you wear around your neck so you can't drop it. And you go from cellar to cellar for tastings. And it's a big, there's like tons of people that go around from cellar to cellar. The weather was absolutely rubbish, so it wasn't as big as it usually is. But it was still a lot of fun. And I brought this camera along to shoot some of that. So you'll see some of that show up in the, um, in the vlog video as well. Um, Real quick on here, Trevor's saying, have you seen the new iPad? Should be perfect for that Narbox. Did they announce a new iPad? See, I don't, I don't, I try not to follow these things anymore. That's not true. I was on vacation trying not to pay attention to these things. Uh, no, I haven't seen the new iPad. The 10-inch Pro is what this is, is perfect for this combination. The new one, I think if you're talking about, I heard there's some rumors about an education one, a lower cost one. If it's not a Pro, it may not be able to handle the 4K 60 footage, which is what I'm shooting and able to edit on, on the on the LumaFusion with the Narbox 4K60. I don't know if the new iPad would do that, but I don't know anything about it yet, so that's just a, a big assumption. Um, okay, so that was that. And then 
lenses, blah, 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 nothing too exciting there. Oh, the car mount. So I used this a lot, a lot. Suction mount, ball, ball mount. I got some really cool shots mounted on the hood of a car, driving around in the Alps. That was kind of awesome, so can't wait to show that footage off. And then there's the only significant piece of gear that I couldn't use, and someone already asked the question about this because they saw my tweet, because I was not happy about it. And that was this, my slider. I know that's really loud, sorry. Gotta make sure that's zipped up before I take it off here. So this is the Edelklone Slider 1. I absolutely love this thing. I've talked about it a bunch. Uh, I haven't used it much lately. It's one of those things you go, God, I gotta use my slider more. Uh, it's a tiny little, it's quite heavy. Um, it's, you know, it's very well made. Um, it's a tiny little motorized slider. This is actually an add-on to it uh, so that you can get different angles on here. I don't know if my close-up cameras are hooked up here. Let me see if I can get that in. Yeah, that is hooked up. Let's get that into place and show you what that looks like. Um, I don't know if that shot's gonna work or not. Let's try. Um, close up, there we go. So, kind of a bad shot, but anyway. So this thing, you can see it kind of tilts up and down. This is an add-on head. I forget what this thing is called, but it's another little piece for it. Anyway, it's a motorized slider. connects to an app on your iPhone. It works great. The problem that I had was I launched the app, and it said a firmware update is required for your slider one before you can use it. I was, for the most part, I was in places where my internet connection was limited to like GPRS, the absolute slowest speed, or one megabit Wi-Fi, if I was lucky. I had crap internet. So I could not update it. I let, let it sit for 15 minutes, the progress bar didn't budge. So I'm assuming it is downloading the update. That pissed me off. So I tweeted to Narbox and they responded and said, you know, open a support ticket and we'll talk about it. But here's, here's the way I see it. The, your iPhone or your smartphone updates the software all the time automatically, fine. So it updated the software for the slider one it updated the software with a required firmware update for this, for the two to be compatible. So now I've got firmware in here that's no longer compatible with the software on my phone. Why not download the firmware? Have the, when, when the software updates on the phone, why doesn't it download the firmware pack at the same time so that when you do finally connect to it, it might be a day, a week, a month later, when you finally connect to it, it already has that software there ready to load. That was the situation as far as I understand it. I did not have the software there, so I couldn't load it. I didn't have the connection to download it, so I couldn't use my slider. So that really pissed me off. So I'm majorly bummed with that. I will update you after I talk to them and get that resolved, figure out what the real situation was. And the last thing is, was a new gadget that I haven't shown you yet because when it showed up, um, I didn't have time to do an unboxing as a live show. I did record some unboxings, but then the battery didn't work. This is the ICANN B holder. What the heck number is this thing? Um, DS2A, the angled one. I think I talked about it very, very briefly. But this is the angled gimbal. Uh, so again, when I first got it, it didn't work because there's something wrong with the battery. Props to ICANN, they FedExed a replacement battery pack. So that's this guy here. They FedExed one to my friend's house where I was staying in San Francisco in the Bay Area so that I had this for the trip. But it meant that I had very little practice time before we actually hit the road. Um, I used it a bunch. I definitely learned a lot while using it. My earlier shots are definitely not as good as the, the later shots. And I think it's a very cool device. I still definitely need more practice time with it, but hopefully I got enough shots to, to make it have uh, been worthwhile to carry. But this is a really slick little setup. Um, so I love that. That was, that was fun. I'm looking forward to playing with that more. I'll talk about it more as well. And that is everything there. How are we on time? I got three minutes till I have a call. Let's do very quickly see what's in this box. And then I'm gonna hang this thing up. Um, there's no scissors here. I don't know what's in here. I can't get through the tape. I have no keys on me. Uh, Ryan, can you bring me a knife? Maybe. Usually there's a knife here. Aha, never mind, I got it. Um, what is this? Oh, okay, this, this is nothing exciting. It's a battery grip for the G9, so awesome. Uh, thanks, Tom, for sending that out. That's the battery grip for the G9, so we will talk about that at some point as well. Okay, that's it. I've got a call in like two minutes, so I've got to go. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Let me see real quick anything else on here in the comments that I missed. Uh, can you put the link of the car sucker up? Skate Tube says, yes, so we will do that. We'll put a link to that down below. Um, I don't remember the model. We'll look it up. Ryan, we'll put that down below. It, it's from Manfrotto. It's awesome. I use this thing all the time. I've had it for years. I absolutely love it. And I've mounted it. I've mounted some expensive cameras, just some very expensive cars, and it's never fallen off. So I'm happy with it. Um, the really good ones, you want to have the three sucker ones. So this is much more security, but, um, but this worked fine for me. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate you tuning in today. It was fun for a live show. I'm not going to do on Friday. Uh, the rest of the week, I am still taking off because it's spring break. I got my kids. We're going to go out and have some fun. But um, Monday, back onto a normal schedule. 
only for a week because then it's NAB. And then I'll be gone for most of that week for NAB. But I will definitely do shows from NAB. If you're going to be at NAB, let me know. Say something in the comments. I will set up another meetup like I did last year. That was a lot of fun. So I will figure that out. But let me know in the comments if you're going to NAB. And, uh, and we'll set up there. All right, guys. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye.